there's miracles everywhere when they come around. That's why Timothy Dixon does not follow the Bible. The Bible says you go to your elders in your church and you be anointed with oil for and healing prayers. No, Timothy says you need to come to one of his camp meetings or Manuel Johnson's camp meetings or someone else's camp meetings. That's where you need to go. Folks, they make themselves relevant in your Christian experience with your God. They become the middleman. You're taken out of faith. When you believe these false prophets and false apostles, you leave faith in God. Thank you for stopping by the Alabama Woodsman. If this is your first time here, I hope you can find something useful in my videos. Check out some of my other ones. There may be some useful stuff in those too. And if you are a return viewer, you are obviously a glutton for punishment, and I appreciate that about you. All right, folks. Now, this is not a Timothy Dixon video like I normally do. Timothy just happens to be the one spewing out this propaganda. It's not necessarily against Timothy that I speak. It's the points he's using to tell everyone to stop judging modern-day prophets and apostles. Now, this is an older video that he did. And what, it, what was going on at that time was Mario Murillo had just exposed Robin Bullock, false prophet from Warrior, Alabama, and Kat Kerr, false prophet of wherever in the United States she's from. And Mario had said, enough is enough. It's enough. This is not biblical. And he was right to say that. Now, I'm not telling you that Mario has, has arrived to where he's no longer NAR. But Dixon is lashing out at him, and he is giving every reason in the book that Mario should shut up. And the, what, the reason I'm making this video is because when you start exposing these people, when you start just doing, maybe you don't have a channel on YouTube or whatever. Maybe you're just at the water cooler at work and you hear somebody talking and, and you say, man, that guy's not a prophet. Here's why, A, B, C, D. You're going to hear the same attacks come to you that Timothy Dixon is using against Mario Morello. And I want to go by and explain these attacks, explain why they're not valid, and what you need to use, the verse you need to use in defense of your exposing these people. All right, folks. Now, as I make my videos, I don't know what's going to be kept in and what's not because I don't watch the video and make a script, okay? I watch the video, see if it's something I want to comment on, and then I stop watching. Then I import it into my program, and then a lot of this I'm watching for the first time, and this is my reaction. So the very beginning of my videos is what I say after I've made the whole video, and then I'm going to tell you what's in it. See, now I know what's in it. Here's something that I noticed, and I don't know what's been kept in and what's been taken out, but if you watch his original video, you'll see a thumbnail. Folks, when he's holding that paper, he is shaking. He is shaking like you would not believe. Like there is a fan blowing that stuff around. Folks, that's an issue. There's a problem there. See, I don't know if the man who heals people has early onsets of Parkinson's or tremors due to maybe not getting the things he needs. I don't know why they're shaking. But those papers are shaking. That's something that I notice. You got to notice the details. We need to pray for that man, uh, first of all, on a spiritual level, and then he probably needs some physical. Now, will this affect him? Is this a sign from God? Is this a punishment of God? If you believe the way Timothy believes, absolutely. I don't necessarily believe that. I believe people just get sick because we live in a fallen world. Folks, here is Dothan, Alabama's prophet. Timothy Dixon. Hello, everybody. This is Brother Timothy coming to you today. Praise the Lord. And and this 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 message here. I wish I had a million people to read it, and and, and read it and talk to you about it. Now at this point, he says it's a message. 
So I don't know if this is him preaching or I don't know if he's had a download from the Lord and some uh, revelation knowledge or a word of knowledge or any of that stuff. Okay. He just says this is a message. This is entitled Judge Not. <clears throat> From Matthew, the seventh chapter, in the first verse, it says, To judge not that ye be not judged. For with what judgment that ye judge, ye shall be judged. Folks, don't trust somebody who just reads part of a verse and you know there's a lot more. Because that person just read to you what they wanted you to hear, because most likely that's what backs up their position. And we'll see in this verse that he's using that in order to make the Bible say something it's not saying. Matthew 7, 1, judge not that you may not be judged. This is a modern King James Version. For with whatever judgment you judge, you shall be judged. And with whatever measure you measure out, it shall be measured to you again. Now, that's where he stopped. But there's more. We're talking about judging someone. What he just said there is don't judge. You don't know what the measure is. What is the measure that you've measured out? Verse 3, And why do you look on the splinter that is in your brother's eye, but do not consider the beam that is in your own eye? In other words, why are you looking at this small problem with your brother, but you're not seeing you got much bigger problems? Number four, or will you say to your brother, let me pull the splinter out of your eye and behold, a beam is in your own eye. Hypocrite, first cast the beam out of your own eye and then you shall, you shall see clearly to cast the splinter out of your brother's eye. Do not give that which is holy to the dogs nor cast pearls before swine lest they trample them under feet, uh, under their feet and turn again and tear you. Now, here's what this verse is saying, because it goes down further. <clears throat> Let's just put it in everyday terms. If you're a drunk, don't sober up and then tell people it's a sin to be a drunkard. Y'all need to stop drinking, because it's the exact sin you're doing. If you're a liar, don't fault somebody and say, hey, lying's a sin. You need to quit lying. If you're a liar, it's the hypocrite that this is, is trying to get across to you. Don't call out someone else's sin if you're in the same sin, is what that verse is talking about. But you'd never know that if you were just listening to him, because he only wants to use part of the verse. Folks, when the Bible says, first remove the beam from your own eye, and then you'll clearly see to help your brother remove the splinter from his eye, what it's saying is this. Let's go back to the example of addiction to alcohol. When you get the victory over your alcoholism, your, your drunkenness. When you get the victory over that, you're able, you've moved that beam out of your eye. Now you can better help someone who has an addiction to alcohol get their victory. That's what that means. Folks, you can't, you, if you're an alcoholic, how are you going to help somebody else get sober? It doesn't work that way. That's what that part of the verse means. So let me tell you what I think this is. I think this is, uh, he is sending a message to Mario Murillo. Um, I don't think this is a, a message to me or to, to Drew or anything like that. You saw the date where he, uh, where he uploaded this. Uh, this is, I think, during the Mario Murillo thing. And so he's trying to send a message to Mario. But here's the problem with everyone, every single soul who uses Judge not lest ye be judged to try to get you to shut up. And that's what it's designed to do. Or that's what they use it for. It's, the Bible didn't design it for that. But that's what they use it for. Let me tell you the big problem, okay? And they don't ever see this. In order for someone to say, judge not lest ye be judged, they will have had to judge you, and which makes them a hypocrite. You see what I'm saying? So they, you, you look at somebody and you say, don't judge, don't judge. In order to say that, I had to judge you to see that you were in error, and then I decided to try to correct you and say, don't judge. That automatically makes them the hypocrite every time they say, judge not lest ye be judged. Now, if they continue within the parameters of this verse, it is different. Let's say you see your brother condemning another one because they're consuming too much alcohol and they're losing 
the verse that says, be of sober mind. They're no longer of sober mind. And they do that a lot. Now, if you're a non-drinker or you don't get intoxicated, you can go to that brother and say, look, I, I saw you judging him and you and I have talked. You're in the same sin. You really shouldn't be judging him. You guys are kind of in the same boat. That makes it where you're not the hypocrite because you're not doing the same sin. They never get this. They always just throw, judge not lest ye be judged, because it's designed to get you to shut up. Galatians 6 and 7, it says, Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Once again, folks, he read you part of a verse, part of a thought, part of what they were trying to get across to you, and then he stopped because that's where he's getting his mileage. Let's read the entire thought, okay? Galatians 6, 7, Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he also will reap. Now, here's what he didn't read to you. This sets the context for verse 7. Verse 8, for he, sowing, uh, for he sowing to his flesh will reap corruption from the flesh. Really, Mr. Dixon? This sets up the whole context you refuse to read. Continuing in 8, but he sowing to the Spirit will reap life everlasting from the Spirit. You see why he didn't want to read the rest of this to you. It doesn't fit in his narrative. Verse 9, but we should not lose heart in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap if we do not faint. Okay, he's talking about sowing to the Spirit now in verse 9. Uh, number 10, so then as we have time, let us work good toward all, especially toward those of the household of the faith. He's saying in, this, in these verses, sow spiritual uh, treasures that you can reap. It don't sow fleshly treasures pleasures. Don't sow in the flesh, sow in the spirit. But Mr. Dixon didn't want to tell you that because that doesn't fit his judge not lest ye be judged. Folks, anyone who weaponizes the Bible against you like this, they're just evil. James 4 and 11, he that speaketh evil of his brother and judges his brother speaketh evil of the law and judges the law. Sometimes the best get caught up in judging others and pointing the finger fast. It will never pay. For you see, we all live in an imperfect world. Though we are belonging to the Lord, striving day by day to reach perfection to Him, we have yet to arrive at Ephesians 4 and 13. Okay, so here he did read all of it, but he is grossly wrong in his application. James 4, 11, he that speaketh evil of his brother and judges his brother speaketh evil of the law and judges the law. Here, here's where you, what you have to understand. He is using that verse because he sees himself as being righteous and Mario and anyone else who criticizes him as speaking evil against their brother. This is his major malfunction. This is, this is his main glitch. He does not see he is the one who is causing division in the church. He is the one who is lying. He is the one who is not hearing from God. He is the one with a seared conscience. He is the wolf in sheep's clothing. He is the one who's leading people astray into strange doctrine. He never sees himself as that one. So anyone who speaks against him is automatically speaking evil. This is, this is, this is his problem. And then he talks about uh, that we've not reached Ephesians 4.13. Let me tell you what that is. Okay, let's start at uh, verse 4.11 in Ephesians. This is the so-called fivefold ministry that really isn't five. Anyway, it was only four and apostles and prophets are no longer with us because they're not needed because the foundation of the church was already set. That leaves evangelists and uh, preachers and teachers. Preachers and teachers is the same occupation, and I'll show you why that is in the sentence structure. Verse 11, And truly he gave some to be apostles and some to be prophets and some to be evangelists and some to be pastors and teachers. 
Now, here's why I say it's only a fourfold ministry. Because the Bible does not say, and truly he gave some to be apostles, and some to be prophets, and some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors, and some to be teachers. That, that was what the, where the flow was going. They were all separated. But at the end, it changes, okay? The sentence structure changes, and that's why teachers and preachers is the same occupation. A lot of people don't catch that. They want to argue, no, it's a five-fold ministry. It was four. Uh, but anyway, number 12, uh, let's back up. Uh, some to be pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. And this until we come into the unity. This is 13 that he's talking about. And this until we come into the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a full-grown man to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. All right, what is this saying? Well, let's go back. What is Dixon saying? He's saying we are not in verse 13. We've, we've not gotten verse 13, and, and that's not true. Folks, he's saying that the church still needs apostles and prophets because the foundation isn't completed yet. That's what they were for. They were for the foundation of the church. Once the church was established, they were not needed anymore. Now, here's the thing. He says that we are not united in the faith because he says we've not reached that yet. That's what verse 13 says. Until we're united in the faith for the edifying of the body of Christ. Folks, we do have a unified faith. Now, I'm not talking about denominations. I'm talking about the remnant church. The remnant church church is unified because if I believe Jesus Christ in the gospel and you believe Jesus Christ in the gospel, I don't care where you are on this earth. You and I are unified in the gospel. Here's what he's saying. We need the apostles. We need the prophets because the foundation isn't set yet, which is a lie. We know Jesus was the cornerstone. The cornerstone was set. We were told the apostles were the foundation. Once the apostles died off and the church was established, then there were people who were remnant. You can't have remnant church and the church not be established. It's impossible. There is no remnant because the church is always evolving, always developing, and that is not what the church is doing. That's what the NAR is trying to do, to tell you, oh, no, we're evolving every day. With every apostle who canonizes every prophet's message, the church is evolving. Folks, they have an evolving church. And I'm telling you, you are the remnant. The church is already established. It is not evolving anymore. The canon is sealed. We don't need apostles bringing in extra Bible. We don't need prophets bringing in extra Bible. All we need is the Bible we have, Jesus Christ as our Savior, and the Holy Spirit enlightening us when we read that Bible. Timothy Dixon doesn't believe that, and that's how he used this verse out of context. Jeremiah the prophet faced false prophets in his time who daily deceived the people by good sounding words. Jeremiah, however, was hearing directly from the mouth of the Lord. He was giving out the truth that if they didn't repent, they would be taken to Babylon. The false prophets not only put him down, but faced a people with lies that would never be. All right, folks, once again, this is Timothy's perspective. See, he sees himself as Jeremiah, but really he's not. He's the prophets of Israel, and Jeremiah is the one saying, no, all is not well. All these prophets are telling you there's going to be a wealth transfer. All these prophets are telling you God is going to protect America once it financially falls. God is, God is saying, I mean, all these prophets are saying, God is going to make sure you don't suffer one bit. And it was Jeremiah who stepped up and said, this isn't true. You're going into captivity. You've been judged. He doesn't see that he is the prophets of Israel and that people calling him out in his false doctrine, they are the Jeremiah type people. He doesn't see it because his perspective, he will not ever think. He'll never consider 
that he might be an heir. He has blinders on and it's full steam ahead. I'm a prophet. I'm sitting under an apostle, which would probably be Robin Bullock would probably be his apostle. That's what he does, folks. It's all tunnel vision. You know, when he makes a mistake, for instance, we were talking in uh, the live stream that Drew and Gary and I did, how in the very beginning, he says that America has fallen into a pit. And then at about the 19 minute mark in his video, he says, oh, but evil will not take this country at this time. He totally contradicted himself. Do you know that he con he prophesies against his own prophecy? Did you know that? Yeah, look at this video right here, and you'll see what I'm talking about. He prophesied against his own prophecy. He said Donald Trump was going to be uh, have a 12-year term, which is impossible, but because he sees the four years where Donald wasn't in the White House is him still being the president, even though he did nothing presidential in those four years. So there was a first term, the term he wasn't in the White House, and then he is going to be elected in 2024. And, and, and in 2024, he'll have to get four more years to make the 12 years that they have been prophesying and that he has prophesied. There's one problem with this. Timothy Dixon said in 2026, he saw a presidential assassination in the Oval Office. Something made big boom, made people unalive. He's saying that Donald Trump became unalive in an assassination in 2026, which means he can't get 12 years. He could only get 10 if you say the four years he wasn't in the White House, he was still the president. He prophesied against his own prophecy. He prophesied against all these YouTube prophets' prophecies. When he came out with his dream, his prophetic dream, that Donald became unalive in the Oval Office in 2026. Folks, that's how you know this man is not a prophet. I, I, I think you've seen enough videos where you know he's not a prophet. And I'm, this video is not to convince you he's not a prophet. I'm trying to tell you the things they will use against you to tell you to shut up. That is all this video is designed to do by him, is to tell you why you should not criticize the YouTube prophets. And I'm telling you, you need to follow Romans 16, verses 17 through 18. Now, he goes on for quite a while in Jeremiah, never seeing that he is not Jeremiah. He is the prophets of Israel. And the people who are saying, whoa, iceberg dead ahead, those are the Jeremiah type people. See, folks, today's current uh, apostles and prophets, they're telling you you're going to be OK. You're OK. You're just like God. They'll even tell you that Jesus emptied himself of all his God, his godness, so that it brings him down to mere mortal man. So you can stand toe to toe and eye to eye with Jesus and you can do everything he did because he was just a man. That's what the apostles and prophets are telling you nowadays. This blasphemy, this heresy. Folks, he goes on for a while talking about Jeremiah, never seeing that he is not Jeremiah. He is the false prophets. Uh, and then he says this. Jeremiah, the second chapter, the 17th verse, has thou not procured this unto thyself, and that thou hast forsaken the Lord thy God? Thine own wickedness shall correct thee. It is an evil thing and bitter that thou hast forsaken the Lord thy God, and that my fear is not in thee. This scripture lets us know when we forsake the, forsake the Lord, and the false prophets did, and are doing they procure or bring down upon themselves the real judgments of God. So, folks, he's doing what all bad preachers do, and that is cherry-picking verses and using them at a context in order to get across his theology, his point of view. He's using that verse to say, you're wicked because you don't fear the Lord anymore because you criticize him, the prophet. See, he, he weaponizes the Bible against people, and he does it in error, which tells me he is not a prophet, because a prophet would know better than to do this. Jeremiah writes, it, it is an evil and a bitter thing to forsake the Lord and no longer to fear him, but to trust in their own thoughts and their own ways. See, folks, you're going to hear that if you criticize a prophet, 
you're outside of what the Lord wants. First of all, you're not displaying love. No matter what you say or how you say it, it's not love if you criticize somebody. Okay, and we, we know that that's wrong. I'm being sarcastic. Um, and and it's, not uni- it's not unity. you got to have unity. The NAR wants unity so bad at the cost of good doctrine. Folks, it's scary. But you're not being unified. The Lord wants a unified church, even though we've already talked about it. The church is unified. Well, let me tell you what is going on here. This is what Timothy Dixon does, and this is what he does not want you to point out about him. The attributes of the false prophet. They speak as if God is speaking, but God is not speaking. They speak, speaks of other gods. Okay, Timothy doesn't do that one. Uh, prophesies in the name of Jesus, but it doesn't come to pass, speaks presumptuously, wears sheep's clothing, but it, but is a ravenous wolf, displays bad fruit. I'm going to say prophetic fruit there. Uh, prophesies lies. God doesn't command them. Uses divination and sorcery. Oh, boy, there's a big one for Timothy. Has false visions and dreams. That's the biggest. L- uh, listens to the deceit of their own heart. He's big on that one. Brings in damnable heresies. He does that with all his William Branham uh, manifestations, sons of God, and, and some other nonsense. Causes division and, and uh, offenses. People follow their pernicious ways. Makes people th- speak evil of the truth. When someone criticizes Timothy Dixon, people will come after you like crazy. And they're making, and, and you're in the right, and they're making you out to be evil. They're contrary to doctrine. He violates doctrine all the time. They serve not our Lord, but their own bellies. Trust me, he's in this for what it can do for him. Uh, They use fair speech to lead people astray. He's a good talker. So is Hitler. Uh, And they prophesy doctrine of devils, which, again, Timothy Dixon does with all his Branham speak and C. Peter Wagner and Lance Walno and all those guys. Folks, he doesn't see he's doing this himself. Now, yes, it is a bitter and terrible thing to leave the Lord when you're doing this, but he can't see he's the one at fault. And that is a strong delusion. Now, the video goes on for a little while, and then he starts talking about when Miriam and Aaron got caught bad and Moses, okay? They were talking to each other, but of course, God heard it. And, and Timothy's going to use this to his advantage and totally miss... Well, maybe not totally, but he's going to miss the true context of this story and these verses. And after he gets through telling that story uh, of Miriam and Aaron, he says this. Aaron quickly made his supplications to his younger brother for his sister. God did not hear. He had to teach them a lesson that he meant for his anointed servant, Moses, not to be touched with their tongues. All right, folks, hold on, because I agree 100% with Timothy Dixon here. However, Timothy Dixon is not using this verse properly. Okay. Yes, uh, uh, Miriam and and, uh, Aaron were taking part in some jaw jacking about Moses. Of course, God heard it. God didn't appreciate it. Uh, This was people in the inner circle and they were bad and Moses, but there's one huge elephant in the room, Mr. Dixon. Moses was a true prophet, and you are not. And, and Robin Bullock is not a true apostle or prophet. And Kat Kerr is not a true apostle or prophet. See, folks like me, the Jeremiah type, who are saying, no, all is not well in America with these prophets, all right? Folks like me and my buddies, we're not afraid of you. And we don't have to fear God because of you, the Bible says, because you're not real prophets. We would never come against a real prophet. That is stupid. And we know that. That's why we know you are not a real prophet, and we have no fear of any of your death threats. That's the big problem with him using this verse about Moses. Absolutely, you should expect God to stand for his prophets and defend his prophets and make the way easy for his prophets if he wants to and protect them and bring vengeance if he wants to. That is God's right. 
But Mr. Dixon, your people are not real prophets. They're clowns. These false prophets that are mockers and real prophets of the real prophets of the Lord enjoy fooling and deceiving the people with their lies. See, this is another reason why I think he's talking to Mario, because people like myself and Drew and, and uh, Gary and Laura and CCC and Gaston and Brother John Elving, we, we don't say we're prophets. So he's not really directing this at us. This is a frontal assault on Mario. See, folks, Timothy does not believe, judge not, lest ye be judged, applies to him. Because he's calling Mario Morello a false prophet now. They, they were probably big buddies until uh, Mario jumped ship and called out uh, Tombstone Bullock and Cat Kerr. Everything was fine until he opened his mouth, folks. Let me tell you something. This man is so convinced that he cannot make a mistake that he cannot possibly be wrong, even though the evidence is is so in your face. He thinks none of this is wrong, and it's all wrong. Folks, this man right here is bending Scripture in order to bolster his position, and this is what people will do, and you need to know their tactics and how to, how to uh, combat them. Sometimes it's... It isn't even prophets who are false ones. It's, it will be real ones who have judged within themselves by their standards of measurements, having left the word and forsaken it and the fear of the Lord, as did Miriam and Aaron. All right, folks, now he gets really confusing because he just said a real prophet could look to their own understanding and leave the Lord and still be a true prophet. And I just have to disagree. I just, it's totally wrong. Folks, if you're a real prophet, you will not do what he just said. Now, what you're going to find is when you start telling people, you know, that these are false prophets, you're going to hear this sort of same thing. Well, you don't understand. You're just, you're just in the flesh. You're leaning to your own understanding. You don't get it. And all you have to do is keep repeating Romans 16. 17 through 18. No matter what they say, do the broken... I was a dare officer, okay? Um, do the broken record technique. Romans 16, 17, and 18 tells me to mark those who cause division among the brethren, and his doctrine causes division. Folks, I wouldn't be doing this if there were not false prophets today. This channel wasn't even supposed to be about this. This channel was supposed to be a, an outdoor survival and, and a, a camping, bushcrafting channel. But God had other plans. Now, I hear from people that say they have trouble remembering verses, okay? And I do too. I can tell you what the Bible says, but exactly where that is, I got to look that up. But this is an easy one to remember, Romans 16, 17, and 18, because it goes 16, 17, and 18. Chapter 16, verse 17, and 18. And because it's 16, 17, and 18, that's kind of an oddity right there, right? And then you just got to remember Romans and that it says to mark those that cause division. This is an easy one to, to, uh, to, to, to memorize, and they don't have a good argument against it. Because you're told to call them out. This is not an option. When you read Romans 16, 17, and 18, it doesn't say if you want, mark those who cause division. It doesn't say every now and then, if you feel like it, mark those. No, it says you are to do it. If you're not doing it, you could be committing a sin of omission, as they say. Who thought that they were higher in God than Moses. They soon found out. Out in just a moment of time when suddenly the Lord called them out and called their hand on their innermost feelings. Timothy, if we want to follow that principle, I, I don't have a problem with that, okay? You're using all that out of context. But if we want to follow that as a doctrine, um, the Lord can chastise me anytime he sees fit. He is God. I will not challenge God. I will not judge God. I will not make accusations against God. If God wants to correct me, there's any number of ways because I pray all the time, God, do you still want me doing this? 
Is this what you want? I make a video and I pray, do you want me to uh, post this, upload this or not? And sometimes, sometimes I'll get this feeling like, yeah, you need to post that. But there's one section you may want to take out and I'll go back and edit that out. Now, whether that's the Holy Spirit telling me or if it's a sensitive conscience, which is how the Holy Spirit does talk to you. One of the ways he talks to you. uh, So be it. But Mr. Dixon, any time the Lord wants to take my hand or, or put leprosy on me, he can do that. He's God. I will not curse God and die, so to speak. Mr. Dixon, you've called down death upon me and my friends so many times. And you're a prophet. Doesn't God honor the prophet's words? Why am I not dead? Why has my house not burned down and my children died and all my sheep be taken away? How come my cars are still out there? Why, Mr. Dixon, you call down death upon us all the time. Why are we not dead? It's because you have false doctrine and you're not a prophet and God doesn't work that way today. It is better that a millstone be tied to a neck and that person's cast into the sea is the comparison that Jesus used. When people are touching even the anointing of one of his little ones, God has no patience to any but run their mouths, tearing down servants of his who are at least doing the best they can to work in his servants. Now that's probably the most pitiful thing I've seen him do in this video. There's plenty of others in other videos. Folks, he says, God has no patience to any but run their mouths, tearing down servants of his who are at least doing the best they can to work in his service. You know why he said that? Because that allows him to make a mistake as a prophet, which is not possible. He's doing the best he can. Folks, prophets don't do the best they can. Prophets do or they don't, which means they're false prophets. There is no try. There is no, I'm doing the best I can. Don't tear down someone who's doing the best they can as an apostle or a prophet. No, folks, they are above correction when you talk to them. You cannot correct an apostle or a prophet nowadays, not even in a chat room. Someone will attack you in a chat room if you say there are no apostles and prophets today. Oh, yes, there are. You just don't know them. You're confusing the people. You're the one causing strife and division among the brethren. That's what you'll hear. You, as a prophet, you don't get to make mistakes in prophecy. In your personal life, if you commit a sin, sure, we all get forgiveness for that. But if you hold the office of apostle and prophet, you don't get to make the mistakes in the capacity as apostle and prophet because that knocks you out. You now become false because you're not doing what the Lord told you to do. And you're not shutting your mouth when he hasn't told you anything to do. Folks, he made this statement simply to justify his failures and failures of his buddies. And that's all that's about. All right, folks, he's about to take this verse and warp it for his own use. It is a dangerous thing to put yourselves in a position of touching the anointing in the life of little ones. How much more to touch the anointing in a man or woman of God who is a seasoned prophet, prophetess of the Lord. Now, in context, I think that prophet, prophetess of the Lord is a direct link to Robin Bullock and Kat Kerr because this is a message to Mario, remember. Folks, you hear it all the time. These people love being called apostles and prophets. It fills their own belly. Their ego is satisfied. He just set up a caste system where the Bible says, do not do not offend one of these little ones, but how much more if you offend the prophet, the seasoned prophet or prophetess of the Lord, he says. You know why he says seasoned? Because he's been doing this for 40 years, he says. Well, not continuously, because there was a long time after his daughter died, he wasn't doing this. But you see, he sets up a caste system. Now God is a respecter of persons because the prophet and the apostles are better than you. 
He just told you. They're better than the little ones. Jesus said it'd be better if a millstone were tied around your neck and you cast in the sea than to offend uh, one of these little ones. You're better than them, Mr. Apostle. You're better than them, Mr. Prophet. That's what Timothy Dixon wants you to believe. And everyone who calls this out in these false prophets will be attacked, even though they're right. There is no caste system with God. You're a prophet and you're held to the same standard uh, uh, we are as far as sin, but when you're in the office of prophet, you are held to a much higher standard for penalty in violating God's rules. But no, Timothy says he's better than you. Because if you touch a little one, a millstone should be t- tied around your neck. But if you touch a prophet, the fire's going to burn hotter if you touch a prophet with your tongue. Folks, this is what you got to deal with. This is what you got to be prepared for. And all you have to keep saying is Romans 16, 17 through 18. God will not tolerate the sin of touching his anointing. Vengeance is his and he will repay. Folks, Timothy just told you a verse he does not believe. He does not believe that verse. Otherwise, why would he be calling down death upon me and my friends all the time? All the time, Timothy is calling down death upon us. Kent Christmas calling down death upon us. Kuhneman and Bullock, they are all calling green. They all call down death upon us instead of letting God just have vengeance on us. You know why they do that? Because it sounds good. Oh, Mr. Woodsman, my prof is going to battle with you because you are not of God and he is of God. God talks to him all the time and he knows that God is coming for you, Mr. Woodsman. You better sleep with one eye open. That's why he does it, which ultimately gives him street cred and financial gain. There, I said it. James tells us that sweet water and bitter water cannot come from the same fountain. Just as much as true prophecy and missed prophecy can't come from the same true prophet makes him a false prophet. Yeah, you ought to learn a little bit from that verse, Mr. Dixon. If a prophet is running down another man or woman of God, take heed that he doesn't deceive you, that it is all right for you to join him with such an opinion and hang yourself right along with him. Okay, now while I agree with this in principle, you don't need to just take people's word for anything on the internet, okay? While I agree in principle, this is a blanket statement from him. Now, what I'm gonna tell you to do is, if I say something or someone else says something against one of these false prophets, listen to the evidence and then you decide Folks, if I tell you that Timothy Dixon predicted Donald Trump to be uh, supernaturally returned into the presidency, into the White House, in three separate months, and those separate months have come and gone, and he is still not in office, that makes Timothy Dixon a liar, a false prophet. Folks, you saw the slide with all his false prophecies. If I present to you that evidence... You have to judge the evidence according to the Bible standard, not today's new spoken word, new rules for prophets standard, new rules for apostles standard. You can't do that. That's not a standard. That's an evolution. That's a development. That's a manipulation. No, folks, you got to take the Bible and judge all that evidence I just presented to you and see if this makes Timothy Dixon a false prophet. What he's saying here is that because Mario, because he used the term, you know, if a prophet says, what he's saying is don't just join with Mario because of what he said. And I'm not going to really disagree, even though Mario was right. You have to weigh the evidence because whether you're on the narrow path of true doctrine or you are on the wide path that leads to destruction Uh, anything goes doctrine, let's change everything doctrine, you're going to have to decide because you are the one ultimately that's going to stand before the Lord. The fruit he is displaying is unrighteousness, regardless of the miracles that signs or wonders he has displayed in the past. 
folks, this directly goes against what Timothy Dixon has taught about himself. Because he will say, no, 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 no. You can take the fact that people are healed in my service. You can take that and see that I am a true prophet, a true worker of signs and miracles and wonders. Because you see it happening in my service. That's proof. Folks, he doesn't want to afford that to Mario Marilla. He says, regardless of what you saw, he is wrong. It's a different standard for Timothy Dixon. Now, folks, you're going to get that argument. Well, people are healed in his service. That, that makes him a, a true healer, a worker of, of miracles, signs and wonders. So he is a prophet. He is an apostle. Folks, here's the problem with that. It's God who heals them in spite of a lying false prophet or a pretend apostle. Now, don't forget Once again, they have set up a caste system where they are better than you. See, you're not doing that. You're you're not able to lay hands and watch feet grow out an inch or two. Are we, Miss Lucky? No, Mr. Uh, uh, Todd White. No, we don't do that because we're not liars and we have a conscience. But see, because you don't do that. What they do that, there's miracles everywhere when they come around. That's why Timothy Dixon does not follow the Bible. The Bible says you go to your elders in your church and you be anointed with oil for and healing prayers. No, Timothy says you need to come to one of his camp meetings or Manuel Johnson's camp meetings or someone else's camp meetings. That's where you need to go. Folks, they make themselves relevant in your Christian experience with your God. Folks, they make themselves relevant in your Christian experience with your God. Folks, they make themselves relevant in your Christian experience with your God. They become the middleman. You're taken out of faith. When you believe these false prophets and false apostles, you leave faith in God because you stop reading that Bible because it's easier just to go hear what the prophet has to say. It's easier just to let the apostle tell you what God wants you to know instead of you praying and you taking the time and you studying and you groaning and you crying and you slinging snot before the Lord saying, God, I got to I got to have you. I got to have you. I need this peace. I need this mercy. I need this grace. Nope. The apostle and the prophet now holds everything God wants to give you, and they'll give it to you when they want to give it to you. And if you want to petition God, you have got to be under an apostle or prophet in the NAR church, or you're not going to get an answer. Folks, these are their bylaws. This is what they teach. The NAR teaches you need a middleman between you and God. And Jesus did away with that when he did away with the Pharisees. That's what these people are. They are the new Pharisees, the current Pharisees that stand between you and God. That's who these apostles and prophets are. Just as the Pharisees of old took the word of God and they manipulated it to make it say what they wanted it to say, to bring on new rules that they wanted to bring on, these current day Pharisees, the apostles and the prophets, are doing the same thing Timothy Dixon has even said a new spoken word ministry he saw out of the hearts of the men and women. You know, that most deceitful of things. And it's going to destroy your good church and new churches under a new thing will rise up. Yeah, that new thing is mysticism. If you're not watching Laura, Magical Mystery Church, you're missing a good series on mysticism. I think it's like a nine or ten part series. It's amazing. Folks, that's what they're bringing in. These are the new Pharisees. They are changing the word of God and people are following it and believing it. And they are no longer in faith with God. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. So you're putting your faith in the prophet. You're putting your faith in the apostle. No longer are you putting your faith in God. When he is displaying evil fruit, there is a great need for repentance so the Lord can continue to use him. If he or she is displaying bitterness, jealousy, fault-finding, etc., there is the great need of bowing his knee to the Lord and asking forgiveness. Folks, his whole video is judging Mario Morello and those who criticize. So he is a major hypocrite because that is what he is doing. Now, you see this often, all right, and you need to be ready for this. They will tell you, oh, you're just jealous. Remember he said that? He said that, uh, that, that if he displays bitterness or jealousy, 
Timothy Dixon has been saying this about all the preachers that have been preaching for years, and they don't have these big ministries and all that stuff. And all of a sudden, Timothy just came on strong, almost like he made a deal with the devil. I don't know that to be a fact. But he came on real strong out of nowhere, bam. And so anyone who says, Timothy, your doctrine is terrible. These dreams are not from God. You know what he says? You're just jealous. You're just jealous. So, folks, when you hear someone say, you're just jealous, you don't have the YouTube subscriptions he has, you're just jealous, you're just talking out of jealousy, what they're doing is they're trying to find a reason to justify not listening to you. That is all that is. Because if you're jealous, nothing you say has any bearing or any weight on anything. And in their mind, in their heart, now they don't have to listen to what you show as evidence the evidence may be true. They may not be able to deny it. They'll see it with their own eyes, especially the video I showed you where Timothy Dixon predicted Donald Trump supernaturally put back into the White House three different times in three different months and it never happened. No, 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 no. Because you're jealous, Alabama Woodsman. I don't have to watch that video and judge the evidence. That's what that's designed for. And my answer is this. I'm not jealous. I don't call myself a prophet. I don't hold camp meetings where I pretend to heal people. I'm not jealous at all. I can stop this tomorrow and have more time to spend with the flower girl if I want to. Folks, don't don't fall and don't play with the whole it's you're just jealous. That's stupid. That's like that's like fifth grade playground yin yes. You're just jealous. Terrible. Terrible defense of a false prophet. Does God love these men, women, who have turned down their best service to him for walking in the flesh and bringing division? Now, folks, what he just did there is he said that, uh, does God love these women and men who have turned down their best service to him? In other words, if you look at the Bible, and it does not support one of these false prophets, and you exercise Romans 16, 17, and 18, have you gotten the hint that I really think you need to know this verse? If you take Romans 16, 17, 18, and you take the Bible, and you see what they're doing is not biblical, and you use that verse to say anything, what you've just done is turned down your best service to God. Because you dare mark them. You call them out as a false prophet and you expose with evidence their false doctrine. You have turned down your best service. Okay, folks, you're going to see this when people say, well, you're just not in the will of God. You're just not in the will of God. You're, the Holy Spirit's not talking to you. Uh, the, the big Zabinski does this all the time. The Holy Spirit talks to us. He's not talking to you, and we know because the Holy Spirit talks to us, and we know because you don't say it in love, you're not worth listening to. That's the example. You're going to get that. But it's not true. In fact, you are doing what's called defending the faith fighting for the faith. Folks, the churches are changing. I just watched Wretched Radio, and they talked about how the, the, the Baptist, Southern Baptist Convention is having troubles with ordaining females in upper roles in the church. They're struggling with it. And he showed in this Wretched Radio video, which, you know, look, I know he's a Calvinist, but that doesn't mean everything that comes out of his mouth is a lie. Um, he showed how in the past, the Episcopalians, the United Methodists, all the, he showed the playbook of the liberals on how they bring these churches out of true Christianity. And that's what's happening to the uh, Southern Baptist Convention now. Folks, all it takes, all it takes is a little crack, and then it's going to spread and spread and spread. So you have to defend the faith. You have to take that word of God, know what it says. And whenever somebody's trying to knock it down, you better defend it. Folks, this is not one of those things that if you just want to do it, you do it. You need to be a defender of the faith. And I'm going to tell you a story, and I'm not bragging, okay? I'm just telling you this as a story. My place of employment uses contracts. And they wanted to rewrite the contract for a customer. <clears throat> and what they tried to include was 
Um, you ever heard of this, uh, a, uh, an act of God as a disaster? Have you ever heard that, like in a contract? We will not, you know, pay monies out if this is an act of God. Well, if I'm not allowed to share the goodness of God at work, I'm not going to allow them to pin the death of a baby who died in a tornado on God. So I went into my uh, my boss's office. We're we're friends. He he never says that man works for me. He's never said that. He says we work together or we're partners or whatever. A lot of respect for that man. Um, and I told him, if this is not removed, act of God, if this is not removed, I'll give you my notice and I'll be gone. And he just looked at me and it was sort of like, are you serious? I'm like, that's how serious I am about this because it was unnecessary. You could put severe natural occurrence in that place and not defame God, blaming him for tornadoes and floods and all that stuff when we live on a fallen earth. Folks, I told him I would walk if that was not taken out. I was about to give up, give up my job. I talked to some people about this. Folks, you, there's coming a day, and everybody, you know where your line is. You know the line that you're not willing to cross and the one that you're like, yeah, I want to be on that side of the line. And I'm not bragging on myself. That was no big thing, all right? But I would have walked. Now, I say it's no big thing, and I say I'm not bragging because I just would have went out and found another job. There's jobs out there for people who will work. So it, I'm not trying to be a martyr or even tell you that this is, is something like that, okay? I'm just telling you, you need to stand up where you can and defend the faith. If you don't stand up for the faith, it's going to be overrun. Now, you could say, uh, Woodsman, we know it's going to be overrun. We could we could see the uh, the uh, the word of God says that there's when Jesus comes back, he says, well, I find any faithful. That means there's not going to be a lot. Well, yeah, but that's because a lot of people are dying during the trumpets and the seals. Folks, I don't think I will ever be raptured. I think I will die long before the rapture gets here because we're only at the second seal as best as I can see. The red horse. We've still got three, four, five, six, and seven seals, and then we got six trumpets to go through. That's a lot of stuff. That's a lot of tribulation. So I don't think I'm going to be raptured. But when the Lord comes back after the sixth trumpet before the seventh trumpet or right at the seventh trumpet at the last trump when it sounds you'll be changed folks until that day comes fight for the faith now he goes on and he talks a lot more and i'm not going to bore you with it because it's kind of the same old things these servants who have turned aside to their own ways must realize they are wrong and return to the lord's path See, folks, if you take the written word of God and you compare it to an apostle or a prophet of today's time, you're going to see it doesn't match up. And then when you tell somebody that's not a true prophet, that's not a true apostle, he says that you have turned aside to your own ways and you must realize that you're wrong and return to the Lord's path. See, if you shut your mouth and you let these prophets just run rampant, that's the Lord's path. Because if you keep your mouth shut, souls are going to be lost. And we need to be people who help others see that they are lost. So I don't believe in keeping your mouth shut. I don't believe in uh, exposing these false prophets as actually working against God because you're doing it to keep someone away from hell. But what he does is he associates any criticism of a prophet or an apostle, because Robin Bullock's an apostle too, he equates that with you have, have left the ways of God, you've turned to your own ways, and you need to go back to the Lord's path, which is shut up and let them say what they want to say and deceive who they want to deceive. They must realize that unity, not division, is an absolute for the body of Christ. Now, folks, you know that the NAR is all about unifying, about unity. When you come against these false prophets, because Romans 16, 17, and 18 tells you to, when you do that, they're going to say, oh, brother, you're dividing the church. No, the false prophet is dividing the church. It's the false prophet 
they are the ones that are not in the will of God. You're in the will of God because you're doing Romans 16, 17, and 18. It's these false prophets who are lying all the time, saying they're dreaming all the time, saying that they are riding dolphins to, to ships out in the sea. They're saying all these stupid things because people eat it up and they get mileage out of it. Folks, those are the ones that are not in God's will. But they will spin it on you in a heartbeat, saying that you need to unify. We need to be unified. You know what we need to be unified means? It means you shut up and see it our way. It's the same thing with the Democrats. The Democrats, the liberals, they do the same thing. We need a unified United States. And everybody's like, yay! And really what that means is, hey, conservatives, Republicans, you need to drop what you believe and come over to our side and then we can be unified. That's what it means. Well, the NAR is nothing but a bunch of liberal Christians, okay? And I'm not talking about political liberal. I'm talking about religiously liberal. They're letting everything come into the church that shouldn't be in the church. Uh, folks, when they talk about unity, you cannot ever, ever give up good, sound, biblical doctrine, proven, written word of God for false doctrine for the sake of unity or love, because they will use those two words, unity and love, against you to say you're on the outside. You're on the outside. You need to come back on the inside when really what they've done is they've left the inside. They've become their own entity on the outside, and they don't know it because a strong delusion has taken them. Coming to a close, I am directing minds and hearts to repentance before the Lord is what I'm doing. Folks, the man just lied to your face. That's not what he's doing at all. What he's doing is he's, he, in this whole video, he has mounted up propaganda, used verses out of context, used partial verses to tell you, stop criticizing these modern day prophets and apostles. That's all this is. This has nothing to do with repentance. Nothing. It is, it is a sham to even say that. That is not what this is about. This video, he is calling out Mario Morello for calling out and exposing Tombstone Bullock and Cat Kerr, which a lot of us have been doing. Um, th that's what this is about. And so what he's trying to tell you to do is shut up. And I'm begging you, do not do it. All right, folks, I'm closing. Um, there is so much more left in this video. I could made this two hours. Okay, easily, easily. But I know most people stop watching in somewhere between 15 and 18 minutes on my videos. Folks, if you're doing that, you're missing the best part. I keep the best part to the end. Uh, watch it at one and a half, two speed if you want to. It doesn't make a difference, but you need to see all the information uh, that, I'm, that I'm presenting because I think it's relevant for today. Folks, we do need to pray for Timothy Dixon. We do need to pray for Mario. Mario, I don't think... I see the fruit where he is quite where he needs to be just yet. All right. He's still got a lot of NAR in him. He still has a lot of that stuff that I think he needs to work through, but it's his to work through. It's not mine to work through. Folks, Timothy Dixon needs our prayer. He's shaken. Those pages are shaken. He, he's got an issue, and I'm not trying to be funny, but if you look at that video, you watch that video, you can see those pages are shaken like the wind is blowing. Timothy needs prayer. Timothy needs prayer on a spiritual level. I think he needs prayer on a physical level. Folks, always pray for these people, okay? All right, one last thing for the, those of you who stayed. I want to say something about the little flag that I had in the bottom of the screen. That is not in support of Donald Trump, although I do support him, okay? I do not believe this was done properly. The flag in the corner is because... I have no faith in our justice system any longer. I used to. I used to work for it. And our justice system is like no other justice system on earth, and it is now putting our country in crisis. Now, I'm going to say this, and then we'll close. The whole thing about Hunter Biden, this is my opinion. That's all it is. It is my opinion. It is my opinion that they chose to prosecute him he will be found guilty, and then he'll get a light sentence, a probation. And what does that do? That means now it can never be brought up again because he's paying his debt to society.
Oh, sure, you can say, oh, well, you know, your, your son got convicted of this, that, or the other. But once he's found guilty and he gets a super light sentence, I mean, a sweetheart deal that the normal average American would not get for the same crimes, it'll take it off the table and the Bidens can say, look, that's already, that that's old news. He's paying his debt. The, the court has spoken. That's all that's about. That's the video. I hope to see you again on the Alabama Woodsman. Thank <laughs> you.